Greetings and welcome to Toastmaster Time, the show that has everybody talking. My name's Steve today, and for tonight's episode, I will be your host. Now, as with all Toastmasters meetings, there are prepared speeches, and the speeches are evaluated so the speakers can get some feedback so the next time they give the speech, it will be even better than it was tonight. And the evaluator for tonight's episode is Dennis Dawson. Dennis, can you tell us what we can be expecting for tonight's show? Thank you, Steve. Now, you know, in Toastmasters, we don't have teachers, we don't have experts. What we do is give peer evaluations. So I'm going to tell everyone what I saw and what I heard and what I felt as I listened to the speakers. Uh, tonight, we have Juan Carlos Gomez Videros, who will be talking about the importance of action over words in the leadership journey. And Carrie Kelly, a child abuse prevention advocate, who's going to share her thoughts about a political ad featuring a 12-year-old survivor of abuse. And finally, we'll hear from Kimmy Avery. She's going to talk about how masculine and feminine personalities are impacted by interruptions and how we can change that pattern. Well, thank you, Dennis. I can't wait to hear more from you as the show moves forward. I'm pleased to introduce our first guest, and that would be Juan Carlos Gomez Vidarijos. Juan, welcome to Toastmaster Time. Thank you so much, Steve. Great opportunity. Well, I appreciate you being here. Now, you're a member of Toastmasters Leadership Club. Correct. Right. Now, this is a prepared speech you're giving tonight. Can you tell us how you write, practice, and get a speech ready for prime time, like tonight? Yeah, absolutely, Steve. Um, after writing, um, and splitting, I guess, the key ideas, key ideas in paragraphs. Um, I found very useful uh, this tool or app we have available for all the Toastmasters members, which is Udly. Mm -hmm. uh, that one I use because it tells you your percentage of fillers, weak words, uh, intonation, um, flow of the speech. So it's definitely a great help to rehearse. You can see yourself. Um, and I have found it like a, a wonderful tool to, to practice. Fantastic. And I'm sure your, the quality of your speeches have improved as you've used Udly. The percentage of fillers definitely has gone down like from 20% to that, something acceptable. So All it right. has. Yeah. Well, that, that's fantastic. Thank now, are you ready to give your speech tonight? Yes. Well, terrific. We will let you get comfortable in the speaking area. And I will introduce you, your, pro, uh, your project, and your title. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Now Juan is speaking from the Dynamic Leadership Path. Level three, inspire your audience. Juan Carlos Gomez Vidarijos, navigating the leadership journey. Three experiential lessons. Navigating the leadership journey. Three experiential lessons. Juan Carlos Gomez Vidarios. Is leadership a destination, a journey, or a state of mind? Growth mindset would tell us that we can train any person into becoming a great leader with the proper instruction and the proper practice. By being a leader myself and interacting with multiple leaders in my career, I can tell you, it's really not as easy as it sounds. Like any, other like any other skill that you have to master, you have to practice a lot. Learn by doing. But think about this, you're dealing with people. So it really can turn into learn by breaking. And we don't want to break people. Early in my career, I can tell you my first leadership experiences, they were disastrous. I was trying to be this empathetic leader and I was forgetting about process, about discipline. I wanted so much to be liked, to be seen as the encouraging, inspiring leader that I forgot about results and about accountability. This hurted me a lot. This hurted the job I was doing my team, my peers, the company where I was working, my own time. 
And the worst part, it really hurted my self-confidence. Because I was digging hole, holes that it was very hard to get out of. I don't want this to happen at all. Especially if you're starting your leadership career, or if you're changing roles or companies, or you just want a, a blank page for your career. So I'm going to give you three tips based on experience that I've seen throughout my leadership career that are going to be very helpful for you to prevent this. The first one, make big deposits on your team's bank account. And by this, I mean time. Invest the time hiring the right person. Invest the time developing your team hours of quality coaching and one-on-one -on -one time. And very important, accountability. Don't overlook underperformance. That will hurt your top performers. Second, align your team vision and goals. Do an experiment. Ask around your team, what are our goals? What are our KPIs? Why are we here for? And you're going to find all type of amazing different answers. So spend the time aligning your team. Number three, an effective leader needs time. You have to unleash your productivity by controlling your time. Take a look at which tasks are not adding value. For example, I used to answer emails shortly and say, hey, I'm going to get back to you and then spending hours searching for that email and trying to solve the issue. Don't do those kind of things. Learn how to say no. Remember, strategy also means what we say no to. Effective leaders will need plenty of time to develop their team. So now you know the three tips. I can tell you that by mastering them, repeating them, trusting the process, I was able to get many positive things in my life. Better jobs, better promotions, higher paycheck, time, work-life balance, and in general, a lot of happiness and well-being in my life. This is what I want for you. But I want to wrap up with the most important message for you. And I want this to be very, very embedded in your mind. Listen carefully. Words teach, but actions lead. Lead by example. Take the three recommendations, but apply massive action in mastering them. And if you do that, you're going to get to your desired destination because you're going to be in the right state of mind, but you're going to enjoy the journey. Because leadership is those three things at the same time. Back to you, Steve. All right, Juan, thank you for the incredible message. Dennis, can you tell us what your impression was of Juan's speech? Well, right off the bat, Steve, of course, I'm always in awe of anyone who's speaking in English as a second language. It's like Ginger Rogers. She did everything Fred Astaire did backwards in high heels. So I am just in awe of anybody who can give such a powerful speech in a language that is not their native language. The message is clear. I appreciated the way one spoke slowly so that we could understand what he was trying to get across and yet had great dynamism in his language. I would for uh, an area of growth, I found Juan Carlos strong and confident standing here, but he had a tendency to use what I call mirror marionette gestures, where he was moving both hands in synchrony almost throughout the entire speech. And it, this is distracting to me from the main message of what he was trying to get across because his message was so strong, words speak, actions lead. And I really appreciated the specifics he gave for how these techniques have helped him to succeed in business. All right. Well, thank you, Dennis, for the productive feedback.
And I would like to welcome our second speaker, and that would be Carrie Kelly. Carrie, welcome to Toastmaster Time. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, I appreciate you being here, and it's great to have you on the show. Now, you're a member of Leaders Worldwide. Yes. All right. You're about to give a prepared speech. It's going to be about six minutes. Can you tell us how you prepared this speech and how you usually prepare speeches? Well, one of the ways that I do it is I meditate and do a lot of deep breathing. And then I sing some gospel, something that is uplifting because my message is not the easy message to give. Mm -hmm. So the go gospel music, does it motivate you or does it help you think more clear? Or? It is something that um, is heartfelt for me, and the strength that I draw from it is what will motivate me to keep going, to keep sharing the difficult story that I share as a child abuse prevention advocate. All right. Well, we have great anticipation for hearing your message tonight. Are you ready to give your speech? I am. All right. Terrific. Well, we'll let you go over to the speaking area. And I will introduce your title, your message, and the project you're involved with. So Carrie Kelly is in the visionary communication path. Level three, connect with storytelling. Carrie Kelly, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, Carrie Kelly. 30 seconds. A 12-year-old child is giving her story of being abused in 30 seconds. And this story is taking place on a very well-known news program that is international. So this child is sharing her story all over the world and she's 12 years old 30 seconds that 30 seconds is going to change her life forever as a 12 year old she might be in the sixth or seventh grade which is junior high school People, children that age can be very cruel. Can you imagine what her life is gonna be like trying to go to school after she shared being abused by her own stepfather and becoming pregnant? She has to live with that story out there. As a child abuse prevention advocate, I would have said absolutely not having her tell that story on camera. There's a way to get her point across. There's a way to share her story, to get the message that she's trying to get across without putting her out there. For example, they could have used her voice and maybe a cartoon likeness where it's her story. You can hear the, the, the emotion in her voice as she's sharing this story and trying to convince people to make a different choice. But then she's able to still be her 12 year old self and go to school and go out with her friends and do all the things that 12 year old girls like to do without all of this baggage. I feel like the adults around her made difficult choices because her message is very clear, is very important. However, her safety after giving such a message, after sharing that 30 seconds, I believe is going to be a problem. I feel like if you know that a child is in harm's way, 
it's up to you to say something or try and do something. It is not acceptable to allow a child to remain in harm's way, especially when you know. I don't mean when you have to guess or you're not sure or you think something might be going on. There are so many cases when people know beyond a shadow of a doubt that a child is in harm's way. And I'm asking for you to speak up, say something. If you know a child is in harm's way, a phone number that you can call would be 1-800-4-A-CHILD. Thank you. All right, Carrie, thank you for the great message. And Dennis, what was your impression of Carrie's speech? Well, very powerful speech. See something, say something. It's a message we hear over and over again. And that's exactly what Carrie has done in this particular case. She saw something on television and brought it to the Toastmasters stage to get it out into the world that this isn't exactly right. I appreciated your pace, uh, the way you used your uh, pace to emphasize the impact of the words you were using. The one thing that I would suggest is that it could have been more of a story to go along with the project. You could either tell a story having to do with how the little girl felt as she was uh, creating the ad, or you could tell it from a first person point of view to make it more in line with the lesson. But the importance of the message came through very clearly, and I really appreciated the speech that I saw here tonight. All right, well, thank you, Dennis, and I am pleased to welcome our third speaker tonight, and that will be Kimmy Avery. Kimmy, welcome. I'm so happy to be here with you. Well, we're happy to have you here, and you're with Heart to Heart Toastmasters, correct? That is right. All right, yeah. and as you're giving a prepared speech tonight, can you tell us how you develop a speech, practice it, and get it ready to deliver at an event like tonight? Stories are, or speeches are stories built on each other, mm -hmm. in my experience. And so I tell a story to friends, or I tell them in my mind, and then I go to my clubs and practice, my club and practice right. over and over again. And sometimes I'll give the same speech for six months mm -hmm. as I get the feedback and evolve it. But I don't really practice much at home. Yeah, the interesting secret <laughs> with Toastmasters is the speech doesn't have to be perfect when you bring it to Toastmasters. You can get some feedback and actually develop it and make it into something really good. Yeah, and I find that over-practicing actually didn't really work for me very well. Really? Really? Yeah. Okay. Too polished, too weird. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we look forward to hearing your message tonight. Are you ready to give the speech? I hope so. All right. Terrific. <laughs> well, we'll let you get settled in the speaking area, and I will introduce your message, your title, and your project. Sounds great. All right. Terrific. So Kimmy is in the dynamic leadership path, level one, writing a speech with purpose. Kimmy Avery, from disruption to destruction, the hidden consequences of interruptions. From disruption to destruction, the hidden consequences of interruptions, Kimmy Avery. Have you ever been interrupted by someone and felt it was distracting? Have you ever experienced interruptions so much that it kind of destroyed your feelings for somebody? Have you ever interrupted somebody and felt like they were irritated with you constantly? When I was in graduate school, I was 36 years old, staying with my father. He'd graciously invited me to live with him. And it was a two-bedroom house. He's sitting at his computer, and I said, Hey, Dad, what do you want for dinner? And he would jump out of his skin. I was like, why do you hate me so much? I took it personally. I had no idea that it was the interruption that was distracting him. It had a huge impact on our relationship over the years. 
And then I learned what I'm going to share with you tonight. There are three things that are critical to change the way your relationships operate. Number one, we have to understand that we all suffer from stuck in your own head syndrome. Every single one of us. We look at the world as if it's a version of our own mind. People, they're doing things that are the same as we would do. Oh, they're like me. They're doing things that are different than we do. Oh, we're upset. We judge and evaluate people from our perspective, and we think we're all the same. The second thing you need to know is that men and women, the masculine and the feminine, are extremely different. The masculine is a provider, protector, producer energy. Think hunter, going on a hunt. They are single focused, focused on getting the result. They don't come home with a deer unless they're single focused on it. The masculine energy is not sometimes single focused. They are always single focused. The feminine has a diffuse awareness, which means that we pour our energy into every direction. People can interrupt us. We say, oh yeah, okay, I can do that. Our children are running around. We've got work to do. We clean the house. We make dinner. We are constantly multitasking. And sometimes, on rare occasions for most of us, we are in single focus mode. So when we go up to talk to a man, somebody in masculine mode, we are always interrupting them. Not sometimes, always. The masculine energy comes up to us, and they want to talk, and we're doing many things, and so they think we're not interested. These interruptions, how the feminine interrupts a man, or the masculine interrupts the feminine, they can undermine our relationships. And from this place of the masculine and feminine, we can't get to be our big best selves, our what I call living your life in love. That conscious place where we all want to be gets wrapped up in this mess. So the antidote to interruptions is what I call the respect factor. Ask for a time to talk, and then wait until talk time comes. So how it would look with my dad, and this is what happened. I said, hey, dad, and I stood by his computer. And he was typing away, finished what he was typing, and he said, yes, Kimberly. And I say, what would you like for dinner? And he said, hmm, how about spaghetti? Great. And I went and I cooked spaghetti. We sat down and had a beautiful meal. It was amazing. If you had told my younger self that that was the kind of experience I would have with my father now, I wouldn't have believed you. So this is what I do with my clients. I work with men and women, singles and couples, to help them have relationships that understand the masculine and find it and feminine dynamics so that they can experience more love instead of the destruction of relationships. And interruptions are one piece of it. How do you, can you turn your relationships around now? Practice the respect factor. All right, Kimmy, thank you for the message. And we have Dennis over at the table now, and he'll give us his impression of Kimmy's speech. Kimmy, I liked very much uh, the way you used storytelling in this speech, the way you started with the story of your father that set the stage for it. Then you went on to talk about the meat of what you wanted to discuss, your three points, and then you came back to the story to wrap it up for us. Uh, you're a very confident speaker. I appreciated your gestures and your body language throughout. One thing that I would request, because I'm old, is a slightly better use of signposting. 
You said that you were going to talk about three things. The first was stuck in head syndrome. The second was the difference between men and women. And I believe the third was the attitude of respect. But you didn't, for me, I need the two flashlights. Here's point number three so that I know uh, which, which one we're on. And then at the very end, I would like for you to circle back to them and say there were three things that I told you, you old fart Dennis. Stuck in head, men and women, respect. Uh, other than that, fantastic speech. Huh. All right, well thank you, Dennis. And thank you for three fantastic evaluations. I think all three speakers got some good feedback and the speeches will e be even better the next time they deliver those speeches. That's the goal. That's the goal. Now, you're a very accomplished evaluator. Do you have a process for evaluating speeches? I do. I always use the same format. I divide the page into two halves, the positive and the could be even better section of the page, and then I divide that into thirds. Hmm. The top is what I saw, second is what I heard, and the last is how I felt. And I use that little grid to catch the things, the specific things that I want to talk about in the evaluation then when it's time to do the evaluation, especially this is challenging to immediately hear a speech and within a minute mm -hmm. talk about it for a minute. So I'm able to sort of uh, put numbers or letters at the sections I want to talk in what particular order because of course I always want to use the sandwich method. This is what I appreciated. Here's an area for improvement. And then this is what I like best of all right. about your speech. Right. You measure the sandwich method. The whole idea is to have the, the speaker deliver the speech tonight, but have them look forward to coming back and giving the speech again, where they build on the good things they did and make improvements. So like we said, it's even better the next time. And the important thing is to give specifics about what went well mm -hmm. rather than what often happens is you say, oh, you had great body language, etc. Oh, but there's the specific things and you get really detailed about what was wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And that sort of is demotivating. So having lots of detail about what you appreciated is especially important in evaluations. All right. Well, fantastic. Now that's our show for tonight. We appreciate everybody who tuned in and watched the show. We record Toastmaster time in the San Francisco Bay Area and if you'd like to find out more, please go to ToastmasterTime.com. Now, if you'd like to find out more about District 57 Toastmasters, the organization that sponsors the show, please go to D57TM.org. And if you'd like more information about Toastmasters in general, please go to Toastmasters.org and choose Find a Club. We are grateful for the talented staff and volunteers who make this show possible at the, at the Media Center in Palo Alto. And we thank our great, great speakers, Juan Carlos Gomez Vidarios, Kerry Kelly, and Kimmy Avery, and our fine evaluator, Dennis Dawson. On behalf of all of us at Toastmaster Time, we encourage you to join Toastmasters and keep on talking. All right, Dennis.